Jumping into a text breakdown today, going from hinge to phone number close to setting up a date and even beyond that. Opening convo starts out with, hey, name, I like your style with an emoji. Girl comes back, says, hey, I like yours too, thumbs up and nice hair. At this point, he goes into the instant response feature inside of Quip and then this is the message we crafted up for him, which was, thanks, I wonder how well our styles would mix. Right off the open, we're transitioning into the idea of us possibly meeting up. We haven't asked her out on a date yet, but very early on, we're already talking about the idea of us being together in person, which is really powerful when you can do it in a subtle way. Girl comes back and says it could work, okay, which is a pretty bland response, honestly. And so he comes back in instant response again. And at this point, the message we crafted for him was, you don't sound confident. And then the girl says, that's the problem with messages. Can't tell how something is meant to come across. From here, we actually send a voice message to the girl, which is a great time to send a message. She's essentially saying that sometimes you can't get your message across through a text message. So the girl's pretty much saying like, it's an easy way to use that as an excuse to go right into voice message. Personally, I like to send voice messages almost from the moment we match because I can demonstrate my charisma, my vibe, and my confidence a lot more powerfully than I can in a text message. So I'm all about sending voice messages personally. So. The message said, maybe voice notes would be better, then we won't have a breakdown in communication, then we might never get to our first date, wouldn't that be tragic? Girl comes back with the voice message as well, which is great too, because now we're getting into a more direct form of communication. We're going from text message to text message to voice message to voice message, and from my experience, when you can start sending voice messages back and forth with women, the next step to go right into a phone call is pretty easy, because you guys have already been pretty much talking on the phone. So. That's why I like this. She says, I'm not really a fan of voice notes, but I guess I led myself into that, which is true. What were you thinking for the first date? Okay, really positive so far. Girl's talking about us and meeting up on a date, and she's like, well, what would we do on the date? He comes back in an instant response, and this is the message we crafted for him to send in a voice message. I was thinking you, me, a bottle of wine, laughs, teases, neck kisses, that sort of thing vibing and building chemistry. So girl comes back and says, sounds like a lovely evening. I could get on board with that. Now at this point when it's going this positively and the girls are agreeing to meeting up and we are sent voice notes and all this stuff, it's pretty clear that you could just go right for the phone number at this point, get off of the dating app and start moving the interaction forward. At this point, all we said is shoot me your number and we'll organize it. Girl actually doesn't respond. So then he comes back again and says, wait, are you a red or white girl first? So she said that cannot be a deal breaker unless you drink rose. Then she sends her number right there and then we just went into a message. So you can see this was like a non needy way of double texting the girl without coming across but her. It's not even like making a big deal about the fact that she didn't respond. It's just like we have some level of entitlement assuming that it's going to be on and we just had like another question to ask her. Now let's move into the iMessage conversation. Hey, blank, it's blank from the thing. Don't worry, not a rosé drinker, which was another message we crafted for him. Just bringing in some callback humor from the previous convo on the dating app. So she says, oh, that thing, I didn't think you would be. I bet you're a red wine drinker though. How's your day been? So I guess the girl pocket dialed at this point. So he just said, did you call? She said, by accident, haha, was just trying to save your number. So he comes back and says, no worries, LOL. I'm a red wine drinker. You know me so well already. My day's been great. Been at uni, then gym. Now I'm making dinner. You. Girl then says, LOL, classy. That's very positive for a Tuesday. What do you do at uni? Just been working, going to the gym soon though. Now we're in kind of like that small talk type of conversation where we've already agreed to meet up. It's just like building up a little bit of a get to know you kind of a vibe, but there should still be some flirtatiousness, some baby stepping towards the idea of the meetup at this point, with, sprinkled in with the get to know you talk. So he comes back into instant response, and this is the message we sent. I'm a classy guy, LOL, getting my teaching qualification, what do you do? She says, I'm sure you are. Oh, okay, when will you finish? I'm a doctor. Wish I was still at uni. And then he says, you'll find out soon enough. Finish in July. It's been a stressful few weeks. Can't wait for Easter holidays. LOL, a doctor. You're out here saving lives. Okay, so again, it's still just in that kind of get to know you talk, which is okay. But like I said, at some point in this get to know you talk, we're gonna be moving it back towards the idea of the date and avoiding just going super boring and platonic in the get to know you talk, which is a big mistake a lot of dudes make. They just start having normal small talk like indefinitely with the girl, which is gonna fizzle out. So she says, when will that be? Why has it been stressful? Have you had deadlines? Easter holidays, LOL, I remember those. Do you get two weeks off? Haha, <laughs> yes, except when we're on strike. He comes back into instant response and this is the message we crafted for him. 
which, like I said, should be moving the interaction forward towards the idea of the day or finding a way to keep it flirty. So we wrote, depends, what's your schedule like? So right away, first part of the message is already figuring out what her availability is. Deadlines, placement, kids attacking me, you know, the usual stuff. Yeah, a couple of weeks, but it's going to be full of essay writing. You'll have to tell me more about that on our date, okay? That's a great line that you guys should just keep stored in your phone. Because anytime you guys are already talking about an activity with the girl, the easy way to move it forward, very simple. You'll have to tell me more about that on our date, okay? Really good way to imply that we're gonna be meeting up soon and steering the conversation off of just boring logical talk into more about the two of us meeting up, which is why you're texting to begin with, right? So she says, potentially free this weekend. Then I have quite a bit of free time next Thursday onwards. What about you? Sounds fun. How old are the kids? Are they putting you in your place? Ah, well, I have an exam coming up. Maybe we could have a productive time together. Okay, so this is positive. Still in a little bit of like logical talk, but you can see that the girl's like genuinely down to meet up. It's not super flirty, it's not super sexual like some of the other breakdowns, but it doesn't always need to be like that either. What's most important is that the girl's on board, she's responding positively, and we're moving the interaction towards the meetup. He says, potentially, kids are year three through six, they try, lol, but it's always the small ones you can lift with one finger that act all hard. So, nice little playfully funny kind of a message. She said, woman of mystery, when are you free? Well, I hope you're not lifting kids when you're on placement, lol. He comes back, free maybe Saturday and Sunday Eve this weekend, no, lol, not about to start wrestling kids. So you can see that the small talk of the conversation is going on, but the other half of the conversation that's going on at the same exact time is coordinating the date. So she says, okay, Thursday is probably best for me, but that might be too long for you to wait. I could be tempted by this weekend, busy Friday night and Saturday day currently. So she pretty much just said I'm free Saturday night, honestly. So he just comes right back with that. We could do Saturday night which is great. She said, where would you fancy going? And then he just brings up, ever been to blank. Really standard conversation, like nothing crazy, nothing super fancy here. It's just moving it forward. She said her availability. We said we could do this day. She said, where would we go? Next line, ever been to blank. She says, yeah, only Saturday outside for drinks though. He says, it's good there, nice wine. She said, sounds good to me. Could go there or anywhere in blank. Do you live in the center? I'm busy till about six could probably make it into town for seven. So he says, sounds good, shall we say 7.30? Living in blank at the moment, what about you? So again, you could see it's just conversation while moving it forward towards the date. She said, yeah, should be okay, blank if you know where that is. That was Friday nighttime. So then he replied Saturday morning, this is the morning of the date, which is a good technique too, by the way. If it's already late in the day, the night before, instead of closing out the thread and then having to double text the next morning, you could just send the reply in the morning, the day of the date, and that kind of carries the conversation into the next day. So he said, great, I know the name, think I played football there a few times. She said, I didn't think you looked like the type to play football, you doing anything today? He said, I'm full of surprises, gotta go to the gym this morning, but having a chill day before some very intense essay write starting Monday, you? She said, aha, better make the most out of this weekend then, so I'm currently at the theater, it's on for longer than I expected. Can we meet at eight instead? Then again, we use the same line that I was referring to earlier about just moving it towards the idea of the meetup. So he said, nice, you'll have to tell me more about it later. Remember earlier I was saying, we'll have to talk about this more on our date, or you're gonna have to tell me more about that on our date. It's a really easy line that pretty much anybody could be using. She says, cool, I'll be getting to the train at blank, gets in at 7.55, wanna meet somewhere near there. So we're just coordinating logistics at this point. That's fine, can meet at blank and walk over to blank. She said, see you soon. See you soon. She said, off to the train. Where shall I walk to? And then he said, Uber's dropping me off outside where the tram is in about five minutes. So you can see we're just coordinating the meetup. She said, okay, I'll wait inside. So up until that point, that was from the moment we matched, getting through the dating platform to text message, then going all the way from there to actually going on the date. Now this is after the date and going from date one all the way to date two. Follow up text, this is the night after the date. Hey blank, last night was fun. Nice, easy, standard message that you could send to any girl like the day after the date. She said, hey, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Even if you did persuade me to let you come back to mine. He said, not sure I had to persuade you, winky face. We should get together again sometime soon. Nice flirty message, because clearly they're talking about what happened on the date and he ended up going back to her house. And you could see she was talking about, you persuaded me. And he's like, I don't know if I technically needed to persuade you. Just like fun and a little flirty. She said, well, I tried to play it cool. We should, maybe over the bank holiday weekend. He comes back in an instant response. And again, we just said, let's do it. There's a day that works best for you, question mark. She says, not 
the Saturday night, but pretty free otherwise. When's good for you? You said you might be seeing family, question mark. He actually leaves her on red, <laughs> but she comes back and says, actually, I could do the Saturday. So yeah, anytime really Thursday night onwards. He comes back an hour later, says, yeah, I don't think I'm going to see family, need to focus on work, so I don't really want to take three days off. Shall we do Friday? She says, yep, three days is a lot to commit. So this is honestly not too flirty. It's more just a little playful, but really just coordinating logistics. So she says, yeah, three days is a lot to commit. Friday's good with me. Have you got anything in mind? And one thing I want to point out is that if you already ran good text game, you met up with a girl, you had a great date, you ended up going back to her place, like you ran a really solid date, you don't need to do too much texting to get the girl out again. Like she already experienced a really good first date with you. She's probably excited for the next date. You don't need to over talk and over text. You can really just set up the next meetup and, and move it forward from there. So he says, great, shall we go for some food? She says, yes, please blank again or blank or blank. He says, I was going to say this place or is there somewhere else you're dying to show me in blank? Well, there are many hidden gems, maybe one day, which is cool. You can see the girl's already thinking about even the follow-up date from this. She said, let's do blank. How was day one of productivity? So then he comes back in the instant response again, and this is the message we crafted for him. I'll hold you to that winky face. I'll show you some gems in blank in return. So you could see now she's talking about future meetups of her showing us around. Then we came back and said, cool, in return, I'll show you around these areas. So you could see we're already like coordinating multiple future meetups, which is great. Even if we don't end up doing all of that, it's still nice to have the conversation moving in that direction. Two days after that, they ended up just going on that second date. So that shows you the entire breakdown going from the moment we matched with a girl all the way to getting her number, getting off the dating app, coordinating all the way up to the first date as well as going from date one all the way to date two. And you could see that when you run a good first date, this one in particular, they ended up going back to the girl's house, ran a good date, girl starts responding positively after. There wasn't too much texting going on from date one to date two. It was just a little tiny bit of get to know you, small talk, as well as just coordinating the next meetup. That's pretty much that whole breakdown. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you wanna learn more about text game, online dating, social media mastery, check out my brand new mobile app. The link is in the description. It's called Quip, okay? You can download that right now. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about these concepts. There's also live weekly coaching calls with me, and there's also the instant response feature. So you can upload screenshots of your text interactions, of your dating profiles. We'll analyze your screenshots and give you the exact messages that you need to send to the girl to get a perfect response, to get her out on a date, so you get more women and more dates going on in your life, all right? Download that right now the link is in the description that's all for this video until next time coach kyle signing out peace out guys